for at least a week and that is for different reasons one like if you tan and uh, i mean you can also you have increased hormones in your body when you're pregnant so that can also we do actually have the gold standard it's two wavelengths in the laser so One person asked um, if we only do natural results and what does natural mean for us? Uh, yeah, that's what we strive for, always do natural results and of course what is natural for someone is subjective but for us a perfectly placed filler should never be noticed as filler I would say so as long as you can't tell like if you do your lips there's a limit of like how big you can do your lips uh, and we always try for like don't lose the shape of the lip uh, try and maintain it as natural as possible without uh, noticing the filler and you always have when you do lips you always have to like not only look how they look with your mouth closed because lips should not not only look good in pictures but you should look nice when you speak so always think about like the anatomy how you talk how it looks when you move stuff like that so how long after you give birth can you do Botox and fillers? Oh, that question we get uh, quite often. And uh, you can, just for your information, you can do Botox and filler while you're pregnant or breastfeeding. And that is because there are not that many studies that have been done uh, on people or women that have uh, been pregnant and doing Botox and filler. So just to be on the safe side, we do not treat anyone uh, who is pregnant or breastfeeding. Also, you have increased hormones in your body when you're pregnant. So that can also uh, cause uh, the actual result to be different than what you expect. So after pregnancy, we I usually say that you should wait because you're going to breastfeed. And you should wait one month after you've stopped breastfeeding just to be on the safe side with all the hormones that we women can have in the body when you're pregnant and breastfeeding. Okay, so one question we received is whether there's any treatment for dark circles under the eyes that are due to hyperpigmentation. Actually, dermatometric treatments can help to reduce dark circles under the eyes. Otherwise, we do have eye creams that can help to reduce the pigmentation, but we can't promise that it will go away, but it will definitely be less visible. Okay, so we had another question about sunbathing after having a treatment done, and she was wondering about um, after she came back for a revisit, yeah. um, if she can sunbathe. I mean, we don't recommend it for at least a week, and that is for different reasons. One, like if you tan, uh, I mean, you can get sunburned, and you can swell, and if you just have fillers done, it's not a good combination. And also, uh, uh, from the needle points, you could get pigmentation. So it's always best to not tan at all. Okay, so we had another question. Um, this woman said she has a very prominent chin um, and she's wondering if we can do anything about that. I mean, sure, I mean, a prominent chin is harder to hide than if you don't have a chin, because with filler you can always add. It's hard to subtract something with filler, but I mean, I would say send them pictures because you can always try and like cover it with filler and make it less prominent. Maybe you need more on the side, uh, maybe you need more under the lid. It depends on your anatomy, but there are ways, yes. Okay, so uh, another person asked about our lasers and if we have the latest lasers on the market. 
We do actually have a golden standard. It's two wavelengths in the laser, so we can treat all skin types, and that's actually quite unique for laser treatments. So yeah, we do have the best one, at least, definitely. Okay, so another question we had is, um, someone is wondering if they can do Botox around the eyes um, and between the eyebrows at the same time as they would do a tear trap filler treatment. Yeah, absolutely, that's no problem because the tear trap is placed uh, here uh, under the eye and the Botox is placed more on the sides and um, between the eyebrows and, and the forehead, so no problem. So we had another question asking if we um, ever fill lips that have permanent makeup. Uh, as a cosmetic tattoo. Uh, yes, that happens, but we prefer to do the shaping first. If you ever consider doing a cosmetic tattoo on your lips, uh, we prefer doing the shaping with the filler before that, so that you have like the finished shape. And then we can of course do the refill um, half a year or a year after that, because that, that happens. Okay, so does lip filler tend to dissolve more quickly if um, you work out several times a week? Uh, it may do, <laughs> but then again it varies uh, between different people because I was uh, explaining to patients today actually that uh, for somebody who doesn't work out at all, uh, it can dissolve faster than for a person who do work out several times a week uh, but that can absolutely have um, an effect or impact um, but it's it's very like hard to tell um, how much of an impact it will have do we use fat injections for the face at all or is it only hyaluronic acid no it's only hyaluronic acid i mean we don't recommend using fat injections into the face because even though it might look nice in the beginning, as you age, that filler, I mean, that fat will move and it's permanent. You can't really remove it unless you remove it surgically. So I always recommend hyaluronic acid because it's not permanent. You can remove it and you can alter and correct it if something's not right. Okay, so one person asked about which treatments that you do. Well, the treatments that I do, I actually do everything, but they are more packed together in a face refinement uh, package that we have. Uh, and those kind of bigger treatments involve uh, when we either reshape the face or rejuvenate the face, where we restore the volume loss. Uh, you can watch uh, episode number 17 to get more information about what a face refinement is, where I'm explaining about it. Uh, also, I do our uh, Shape by Foundation patients. Uh, I'm one among the uh, injectors who do them. And those also involve uh, people with uh, facial paralysis, where you have to treat one side with Botox and the other side maybe with filler and vice versa. How long does tear trap filler last? Uh, just as like any filler anywhere, it's very individual, but we usually say between nine months and up to two years, but it all varies on your metabolism, your lifestyle, all of that affects the uh, longevity of filler. Okay, so is there any way to reverse the effect of Botox? There is not. Um, you will have to wait uh, approximately three or four months for it to wear off. Um, depending what area is treated and with how much Botox. For example, if you treated the masseter, it can take a longer period of time than, for example, the forehead. Okay, so we have one more question. Um, if you had Botox gummy smile, is that gonna affect the way you speak or would you have trouble pronouncing words? Uh, no, not really. I mean, in the beginning, uh, as the Botox kick in, kicks in, it can be, uh, what can I say, it can feel weird maybe. Uh, and especially if you like, let's say you do Botox lip flip, in the beginning you can feel a little bit stiff, but 
that changes and uh, what changes we call it that you uh, get like used to yeah, it yeah you get used to it and um, so it doesn't affect your speech but in the beginning you can feel weird uh, but that disappears and you don't notice anything after like 